Welcome everybody, my name is Dennis Brown and you're here for my weekly Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'm gonna share with you four reasons why freight brokers need a sales coach. That's what we're gonna talk about today and a bunch of other stuff, but along the way here, do me a huge favor, hit me up in the comments, let me know the city and state you're logging in from, truly appreciate it, love to hear from you, maybe I'll give you some shout outs. Also, if you're catching this on replay, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Glad you're joining us. Hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. I'd love to hear from my replay folks. Um, and here, so here's the agenda. We're going to do the training. Okay. Then we're going to do a giveaway. We haven't done a giveaway in a little while. We'll do probably a Freightpreneur t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have, ways you can't understand, or maybe some cash. I'm not quite sure. It depends on time. And then we're going to do live Q&A. All right. That's where you can ask me any questions. I will get to as many questions as I can and we will go from there. Okay. So we got a bunch of people joining the stream. Thank you so much for being here. We have Cynthia Moore from Maryland. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Harvey from Arkansas. Leonard from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Danielle from Las Vegas. Kevin Perry from Raleigh, North Carolina. We have Lil Landon Get Rocks, Get Racks from Fort Liberty, uh, North Carolina. Antoine from Cary, North Carolina. Welcome. Luke from Moses Lake, Washington. Welcome, Luke. Connor from Armenia, as always. Welcome, Connor. Thank you for joining me again. Next links from Valley Stream, New York. Blakely Friend from Buckeye, Arizona. David from uh, Ontario, California. David Weber. This is Weber, Zeber, Weber. I believe it's Weber. Jamie Lee from Pittsburgh, PA, not far from Buffalo, where I'm at. Uh, Annette from Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome. Hugo, thank you so much for joining me. Mark Townsend from East Eagle Point, Oregon. Corey Buchan from Billings, Montana. Yes, I finally got it right, Corey. Uh, Akach, Achak, Achak from uh, Virginia. Sorry if I murdered your name. Hugo from Fontana, California. Rosie Vasquez from Virginia. Thank you so much for joining me again today. We're going to give you, I'm going to share with you four reasons why freight brokers may need or should seriously consider a freight broker sales coach and the importance of sales coaching. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Here's my notes. It's just a quick outline. Uh, I'm going to do that. Then we're going to talk about ooh, what happened here. Okay. And then we're going to talk about, um, we're going to do the giveaway. Then we're going to do live Q and A. So let me grab a quick drink while we're waiting for some people to get live. Um, let me know, are you a first timer? Is this your first time in the stream in the, in, in a freight broker bootcamp live? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from my freight broker bootcamp students, people that are already students of bootcamp or students of my freight broker sales accelerator. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and then we are going to get Jamie Lee first timer. Awesome. Welcome Jamie Lee. Uh, and then we're going to get started in just a minute or two. It's definitely worth the wait. You seriously want to want to hang tight here because I also have an announcement at the end that I didn't tell you about at the beginning, but if you hold tight, you're going to get an announcement. All right. And it's something that some of you have been waiting for. Hint, hint. Okay. I'm trying to be subtle. Uh, another first timer. Oh, Harvey's a student. George Miles, the first timer. Awesome. Annette, student of both. Bootcamp and the Sales Accelerator. Annette, awesome. Thanks for joining me. Cool. All right, so the majority of people are going to catch this on replay. <clears throat> so I've got some notes to go over. And again, the topic today, what I want to share with you today is four reasons why freight brokers need a sales coach. Now, this applies to both experienced and new freight brokers. And this also applies to freight agents, of course. So let me give you the first reason. Reason number one is to get past your fear and, and anxiety associated with sales. All right, because a lot of people have anxiety and fear associated with sales. It's the fear of failure. It's the fear of what people might think. It's the fear of cold calling. It's the fear of rejection, right? So that fear is real. I promise you it's real. And it's important that you address that fear because if you don't, no matter how much you learn, how many skills you learn throughout your life, that fear is going to rule the roost. 
And I can tell you that in my freight broker sales accelerator and in all the coaching I've done, we end up talking a lot more about mindset than I ever imagined when I first started doing sales coaching. So number one, you have to get the proper mindset. You have to get past your fear of sales and sales related activities. And a coach can help you do that because they can identify those fears. They can help coach you through those fears. They can work with you. They can build your confidence. And that's a big, big part of, uh, of, of being successful in sales is overcoming the fear and apprehension of engaging in the sales activities that are going to drive revenue and drive results. So that's number one. A coach can definitely help you pass the fear. And number two, a coach can teach you the skills and the proper system that will allow you to thrive as a freight broker, right? So a coach, particularly in the sales side, can teach you you know, how to do cold outreach, whether that be cold calling or cold email or through LinkedIn or face-to-face. -face. So they can teach you a multi-channel outreach approach, an approach that allows you to be effective uh, in more areas and in more channels than just the phone, right? The phone's a great tool, but it's not the only tool. So you can learn the skills that are necessary to do that. Now, if we drill down on that a little bit, let me give you an example. Let's take cold calling, for example, over the phone. Most people pick up the phone and they either ramble because they don't have uh, a well-defined you know, approach or they use a very generic approach. And unfortunately, in most cases, they end up hearing the dial tone. They don't get a lot of great feedback. They get a lot of rejection. They get a lot of we're not interested. They get a lot... We don't deal with brokers. They get a lot of, I'm happy with my current provider, right? That's what they hear. But if you learn how to create a compelling sales hook, if you learn how to get your prospect's attention in the first three or five or seven or 10 seconds, that's the secret to sales. Learning how to be different, learning how to get their attention, learning how to engage your prospect rather than sounding like everybody else. And those are just some of the skills that a good sales coach can teach you uh, about how to get customers and the entire sales process, right? So that's number two, you can learn the skills. But the second part of number two is beyond the skills, right? You can just learn a skill and still not be successful in sales. Meaning you can learn how to do a cold call and get your prospect's attention. But if you don't know how to follow up and you don't know how to overcome objections and you don't know how to close the sale and you don't know how to do customer retention and development, if you don't know those, if you don't have those skills and you don't have a full system in place, then you're probably going to go nowhere fast, right? So having not only the skills, but the proper system. See, that's the difference between what I teach and what a lot of you'll hear a lot of people talk about is that I have an entire system. It's called my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator System, right? It's a framework that takes you from mindset all the way to turning your first customer with their first load into a six or seven figure client, right? So it's a, an entire system. It's not just a bunch of uh, techniques or strategies bundled together, okay? All right, so that's number two. You can learn the skills and learn the proper system. Number three, you can save an enormous amount of time and pain and rejection by learning in advance from your coach. Because there are common mistakes that every salesperson makes. There are common issues or challenges that every salesperson has, whether you're a freight broker or a freight agent or other. And so a coach can help you navigate those and work with you in advance to set the proper expectations and to help you navigate through those challenges. I mean, the fact is there are going to be challenges. Sales is not easy. It doesn't matter whether you're selling insurance or real estate or some SaaS product or you're selling brokerage or, or asset-based trucking, whatever it is, right? There are always going to be challenges, but a coach can help you navigate those can help you predict those, can help you when you are faced with them to overcome those issues without trepidation, without fear, right? So that is number three. And number four, 
a sales coach can exponentially increase your odds of success. Now, I say that, and I don't say that lightly. And, and the reason why I say that is because here's the thing. Every great athlete, let's take Michael Jordan or Phil Mickelson or Tiger Woods. Every great athlete, every modern athlete, everyone that you see on TV, everyone that you admire, everyone that you clap for has a coach. Some of them have multiple coaches, right? A lot of great entrepreneurs, top entrepreneurs and executives and CEOs, they have coaches, okay? Anybody and everybody who's done anything in their genre, whatever it is, whether that be sports, whether that be business, whether that be, you know, athletics or whatever the case may be, has a coach, multiple coaches sometimes. So what coaches are able to do is they can help you fold time, right? And by doing that, especially if you're a freight broker startup or if you're a new salesperson in whatever genre, freight broker, jazz hat based agent, whatever it is, you know, they are going to exponentially help you to increase your odds of success. So, you know, the example is let's take, let's take freight broker A over here. And, you know, he has no experience in the industry, comes in, just uh, goes with his gut, has maybe a generic sales script and is going to start smiling and dialing. And that, that, that can work. I've seen people do it. Trust me, they've worked for me. Uh, I've seen them go through the course and do it. I've seen them outside of that become successful. But scenario B is, you know, freight broker B is someone who invests in the skills and the coaching and the system around sales and has a very strategic and detailed and identified approach to reaching out to their customers, to following up with their customers, to overcoming objections, right? To customer development and retention and has a true system there. Let's compare A, right? We got freight broker A, he was over here. And freight broker B is over here, the one who's got a much more defined system. Which one do you think is gonna be more successful? Well. I can tell you right now, I mean, it's a no brainer, right? Freight broker B, the one who is more prepared and has more skills and has a better system, assuming that everything else is equal, their motivation, their inspiration, their, you know, their why, their reasons, their work ethic. Trust me, freight broker B who invests in those skills and systems uh, is going to win 98 out of a hundred times. All right. So those are the four reasons. Let me give them to you really quick. Number one, get past the fear of sales, cold calling, and everything associated with sales. Number two, learn the skills and systems necessary to thrive as a freight broker, particularly in the sales arena and getting shippers and getting customers. Number four, it's going to save you time by learning in advance from the mistakes of others and common related mistakes and issues and challenges. And number four, exponentially increase your odds of success. So those are the four reasons. If you thought any of these made sense and you're struggling with sales and you need some help, here's what I want to share with you really quick. I'm about to open enrollment to my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator Program. That is a five-week coaching program where I take that piece of my brain, I transplant it into your head, and I teach you everything I know about freight broker sales strategies, tactics, tools. But more importantly, you will walk away with an entire system that allowed me to do over $200 million as a freight broker, right? No, if you want to be on the wait list, you just go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list, okay? Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Now, I'm going to be opening enrollment, okay? Today is Monday. We're doing this live. I'm going to be opening enrollment in the next 24 hours. Now, spots are limited, okay? And all I can tell you is if you get on the wait list, you will be the first to get notified. You will have the first to get the opportunity to get enrolled and to work with me directly. And I'm not going to dive into the entire program right now. You'll get notified of that. But here's the thing. Um, it's going to sell out quick. It's a first come, first serve program. So if you get on the wait list, 
you get the notification, they click on the link, you see all the details, you enroll, and boom, next thing you know, we're working together. Um, and I'm teaching the entire system that allowed me to do over $200 million as a freight broker. All right. Now, if you're just getting started, maybe this is the first time in the feed and you're not quite sure uh, how to navigate this whole freight broker thing, and you're still in startup mode and you're looking to get your authority or your bond or your set up your office or just learn the fundamentals, you know, the freight broker sales accelerator may not be the program for you. It's a little bit more advanced. But if you're looking for that type of help, you can check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. In that startup program, I've trained over 10,000 students, right? Um, we've had that program for over a decade, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. So you can check that out at FreightBurgerBootCamp.com. Do me a favor. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. Truly appreciate it. Uh, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear your feedback, and make sure you share the stream. Um, have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. Make sure you join me every Monday for another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. All right. So everybody that wants to stick with me here, I got two more things we're going to do. All right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming through the training. I have two things. Number one, we're going to do the giveaway. And then number two, we're going to do live Q&A. Okay. So if you guys want to hold tight for the live Q&A, feel free. We're going to jump into live Q&A. Um, but hold your questions for now. All right. Hold your questions for now. Um, people are asking, how do I get on the wait list? Freight broker. Oh, here, I'll put it up on the screen. Here's the wait list. Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. All you have to do is fill that wait list out. It's free to get there. It takes 60 seconds, bing, bang, boom. And you're going to be the first to get notified. I am going to be opening enrollment in the next 24 hours. Okay. Now, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know, I have sold this program out in as quickly as two days, completely sold out where I can't take any more members because it's a coaching program. I can't have thousands of people enroll, right? I usually limit it depending upon my schedule and depending upon the, the program, anywhere between 50 and 100 people, but it sells out quick. Trust me, I only open it about once every three to six months, okay? So yeah, so definitely get on the wait list. Thank you for reminding me to put that up on the screen. Um, ba, 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 ba. let's see. All right. So we're going to do the giveaway. All right. Let's have some fun. Let's do the giveaway. Thank you everybody for the, for the great feedback. Hold your questions, the Q and a questions to the end. If you, if you put them in now, they're going to get lost in my feed. You got to understand I have, I'm streaming this on Facebook. I'm streaming this on LinkedIn and YouTube. So what you're seeing in your feed is a fraction of what I'm seeing and it scrolls up very quick and I lose it, okay? So hold your questions until I tell you uh, to put your questions out, okay? So let's do a quick giveaway. Uh, let's do a t-shirt. Someone, freightpreneur, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. All right, let's do that. So if who here is interested in, in winning a freightpreneur t-shirt? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know right now if you're interested. If there's no one interested, then we'll skip the giveaway, okay? And I'm going to make this very, very simple, all right? Freightpreneur, uh, one lucky winner, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. I've given away hundreds of these shirts over the years. And if you guys are interested, then hit me up in the comments and let me know. If nobody's interested, well, you're going to have to do something for it, okay? So I'm only going to give one winner. But I just want to see if anybody's even interested in the shirt. Maybe there's some people in here that have already won the shirt. I'll bet you there are. All right. So we got a handful of people that are interested. Uh, all right, cool. So let's do this. Here's all you got to do to qualify for the shirt. Number one, you got to be in the United States because I don't ship this shirt overseas. Apologize to all my overseas students and friends. I've had students in 16 different countries. but this this will not apply to you. You know, in the future, we'll do other giveaways. A lot of times I do cash giveaways, but today we're going to do the shirt. So if you want a chance to win the shirt, here's all you got to do. Pull out your smartphone, your Apple, or your Android phone. If you got an Apple, go to your podcast app, okay, where you listen to podcasts. And then what I want you to do is search for Freight Broker Bootcamp. Now, podcasts are typically free. Freight Broker Bootcamp is definitely free. Go to Freight Broker Bootcamp. Uh, in your podcast app, you will see my bald, shiny head and the logo, right? You'll see something like that. I know you can't see it real well, but pull up Freight Broker Bootcamp in your podcast app and then uh, rate, review, and subscribe. 
okay? And then come back in here for the Apple people and tell me in the comments, rate, reviewed, subscribed on Apple. That's the only acceptable response if you want to enter for a chance to win. So that's Apple. If you're on Android, then you can go to Spotify. You can go to Google Podcasts. You can go to any podcast app that you want to. And you can pull up the Freightburger Bootcamp app, right? Pull, or pull up the Freightburger Bootcamp podcast, which is the best of the best audio training that I've ever done in the last 10 years. I've got hundreds of free trainings in there. And you can rate, review, and subscribe, and then come back in here and let me know what platform. You just say rate, reviewed, subscribed on, on Spotify, rate, reviewed, subscribed on Google, rate, reviewed, subscribed wherever. Okay. Now, some of them may not allow you to, to review, but bear with me, rate, reviewed, subscribed wherever you are subscribing. Okay. Wherever you are reviewing. That is the way that you enter to win. It'll take you literally 60 seconds. I'm going to pick one winner. So you got a few minutes to do that. And then we are going to go into Q&A. Hold your questions, okay? Hold your questions. Anybody want to stick around to them? Hold your questions. And I may have a bit of a surprise for people that are interested in the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. Um, if we have time, I'm actually going to share my screen and look under the hood and show you the actual program, show you the actual training program. Okay. So I'm going to bring it up on a screen share and I'm going to show it to you if you guys want to see that. So hang around if you want to see that. But next, uh, we're going to do the giveaway. Then we're going to do the sale, uh, the question Q and A, and then we'll do the, um, we'll go from there, right? Depending on time. So what do we got? All right. Cynthia Moore, rate, reviewed, and subscribed on Apple. Awesome. Annette, rate, reviewed, subscribed on Spotify. Awesome. So we got two people. So right now, those two people have a 50% chance of winning. Okay. So whoever else wants to just pull out your phone. Listen, you got to understand the Freightburger Bootcamp audio experience. My, my podcast is absolutely free. We've been ranked by Apple as one of the top 100 podcasts to, to listen to in the business space, not just in freight or logistics, in the business arena, uh, entrepreneurship. There are tens of thousands of podcasts. We've been ranked in the top hundred. That's not me ranking it. That's Apple. That's based on your feedback and the people that have given them feedback. And so, listen, um, you can listen to it while you're driving your car or your truck if you're a truck driver. You can listen to it while you're on the treadmill, while you're walking the dog. It's one of my dog. It's one of my favorite ways to listen to training and to listen to information and to learn. And you'll see that we put out two new episodes every single week. Okay, so you guys can check that out. Some of the most recent episodes are how much does it cost to start a freight broker business? Uh, how to survive year one as a freight broker? Should a new freight broker hire independent freight agents? Hiring freight agents to grow a $350,000 a month freight brokerage. That was an interview we did. How to get shippers as a freight broker, freight broker cold calling tips, um, you know, a Q&A that I did. So yeah, lots of, lots of great information there. Absolutely free, costs you nothing. Whether you're a student or not, it costs you absolutely nothing. So we got a few more people. We've got Jamie Lee. We've got Kevin Perry. We got Luke. All right, cool. 60 more seconds, and then we're going to do the giveaway. And then I promise you we will dive into the Q&A. All right, so what do we got time-wise? Bing, bang, boom. All right. And for those of you that are at the point where you – you realize that selling is a very important part of the process of becoming a successful freight broker, or freight agent. If you're a newbie to the industry and you're just getting started, get on the wait list. It doesn't mean you have to enroll. You're making no, no commitment. Okay. But you're letting me know that you're serious and I'm going to send you the notification when it releases in the next 24 hours. And you'll have the first opportunity to get enrolled. Now, on the other side of the coin, if you're an experienced freight broker, maybe you've been doing this for three or six or 12 months, or you've been involved in it for five years, right? And you realize that you need to brush up on your sales skills and you need to have a coordinated and cohesive system that allows you to navigate from A to Z to overcome those objections, to get your prospects' attention, to do customer retention and development if you need a real system. And even if you've been a freight broker for three, four, five, 10 years, and you're looking to brush up on that, 
this would be one of the best investments you could make. The ROI is insane on investment like this. Okay. So you can get on the wait list for apergabootcamp.com forward slash wait list. All right, cool. Let's do the giveaway. We got a few more people that are in. All right. So I'm going to do my very non-scientific method of closing my eyes, scrolling through the feed. We're going to pick one winner. And the winner today is Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee is the winner. And she actually did say Apple. So she had two posts. So she did follow the directions. Congratulations, Jamie. Thank you so much. So Jamie Lee, you want to, you won the t-shirt. Here's all you got to do to collect your prize. Either connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, search Dennis Brown Freight Broker on LinkedIn and you can connect with me there and then message me your full name, your address, and your size and that you won the podcast subscribe t-shirt giveaway. Or if you're not on LinkedIn, you don't, you, whatever the case is there, you can go to my Freight Broker Bootcamp Facebook page. Search for Freight Broker Bootcamp. You'll find the page and you like the page and then message me your full name, your address, and your size. And, and then let me know that you won the podcast subscribe t-shirt giveaway. And I'll make this sure this goes out to you. You know, you'll get it within a couple of weeks. Truly appreciate everybody who played along. Nobody's a loser. You, I promise you, you will absolutely love the podcast. I'd love to get your feedback. I'd love to get your reviews. I'd love to hear anything you have to say on how I can improve the podcast. Uh, Jamie Lee, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Now, let's jump into the Q&A. Who has questions? Let's go. Rock it out. If you have questions about... Today's uh, lesson on why freight broker, why you need a freight broker training or anything about sales or anything about operations or startup, any of those things, mindset. If you have any questions about the freight broker sales accelerator, I can't tell you the price. I haven't finalized that. You'll get that tomorrow when I open enrollment if you're on the wait list. All right. Congratulations to everybody. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Question from Connor. Dennis, how much to pay to customer sales reps and carrier sales reps if you are a freight agent and want to open your agency? Okay. Well, Connor, you're in Armenia. Okay. So I have absolutely no idea what you would pay over there. Okay. I have no reference point. I have a feeling it's significantly less expensive over there uh, for hiring people than it is in the US. Okay. US is usually pretty expensive to hire people relative to the world economic, you know, um, standards. Okay. So I'm not quite sure over there. I can tell you that, you know, both of those roles can fit into two different kind of categories, a base plus a higher commission where they have a a smaller base salary, maybe in the United States here, it's somewhere between 30 and 40 grand, right? As a base, somewhere in that range. And then they have a higher commission opportunity on the back end where they can make a percentage of the, of the, of the profit generated from any of the loads, okay? Now that goes both on the customer sales rep and on the carrier sales rep, okay? Um, that's the lower base, higher commission. That is what most brokerages do. They, they like variable commission and, and anybody who's successful and is smart would prefer a variable commission. Okay. Um, the other way is kind of what they call a draw versus commission. So, you know, they may pay a draw versus commission. So, so rather, so if they're going to pay you 30,000 a year, they pay $2,500 a month versus a higher commission, but you're going to get the higher of the two. So let's say your commission was higher than your draw, then you're positive, right? Then you have a positive uh, draw. If your commission was lower in the draw, then you have a negative draw. And that kind of builds up a negative bank where you have to pay back that draw over time. So those are the two ways that I've seen that most um, sales, carrier sales and customer sales reps are done in, in, the, in particularly in the U.S. Now, there is another option where you have a, if you have a very experienced 
person in those realms. It may be a higher base and a smaller commission. So there's a couple, couple of ways there too. You know, I can't give you, you know, all, here's what we all know, particularly in the United States, um, the cost of living has went up a lot, right? Home prices have went up a lot. Fuel prices have went up a lot. Insurance prices have went up a lot. Everything has went up a lot, right? And our wages are following, right? Used to be years ago, you know, when I first started my freight brokerage, minimum wage was probably, I don't know, it was probably 2003. I'm not sure if I had to guess it was, might've been seven or eight bucks an hour, probably. Now, in most cases in the United States, it's like 15 bucks an hour. So it's doubled and it's going to continue to go up. And if you have skills, obviously you're going to be able to do much better than minimum wage. So I can't give you an exact dollar amount, but I gave you a bit of a framework that you could use to try to identify what might be best for you. I hope that helps. Okay, question from Hugo. What do I really need to charge the shipper? And when do I mention the fuel surcharge? Thank you. Okay. All right. So Hugo, what you need to charge the shipper is whatever you have identified as the cost to move the freight from point A to point B, plus the profit that you want to generate. So let me explain to you that in more detail. Say uh, you're the shipper. I'm talking to you. We've identified you have a need and it's a flatbed load from Buffalo to Atlanta. Okay. And you need a quote in rates on Buffalo to Atlanta. So what I would do um, is I would then go out and identify what the cost would be for a flatbed from Buffalo to Atlanta. I can do that using some of the, using the load boards, using some rating tools, using my own internal knowledge from past experience. And I will identify how much it's going to cost me. Let's say, for example, I know it's going to cost me just a hypothetical $2,000 to buy a truck, a full truckload van or a flatbed load from uh, Buffalo to Atlanta. At that point, I mark it up. I may add $200, $300, $400, typically somewhere between 10 and 20% profit. So I may charge $2,200, $2,300, $2,400, um, depending upon the complexity the, and, and you know the market conditions and my personal preference. And then that's what I quote to the shipper. That's what we call a all-in rate. Now, that is much easier for starters, for newbies and new people to the industry. And many shippers want an all-in rate. That's an all-encompassing A to Z rate, okay? It doesn't include accessorials, but it includes the fuel, right? So that's what you would bill them. Now, if they require a fuel surcharge and they want a line haul plus fuel, now you've got to reverse engineer the rate of what their fuel surcharge is. And so, you know, it's uh, X number of miles, let's call it, I don't know what it is. Let's say it's 1100 miles or something. Um, I know it's probably not even that, but it's probably 900 miles. Um, let's say it's 900 miles and you know their fuel surcharge is X cents per mile. So now you can identify what their fuel surcharge is. And then you would identify, you already know what the cost of the truck is. So you can back engineer that based on the miles and the line haul. So you're basically going to take the number of miles divided by the line haul, right? Right. Um, and that's going to give you the, the, your, your line haul rate. And then you add the fuel to it, right? So I know it seems a little bit complex, but for you to get started in most cases, it'll be an all in rate, right? Which is the easiest way to get started. And a lot of shippers operate in an all-in rate. Some of them, larger shippers in particular, are going to want a fuel surcharge built into it. But many, many shippers will do all-in. And I hope that helps, right? So good luck. I'm sure you'll do great. Okay, Leonard, I'm 60 years old, entering the freight industry. What is the oldest person that you know that entering in the freight industry? <laughs> you know, I don't ask age. You know, I don't ask age. You don't look 60. You look a lot younger than 60 unless you're, you know, catfishing us with that picture. But, um, you know, I, I can't really help you there. I mean, I know that I know that I've had numerous students that are in their 50s, 60s and even 70s. Now, I don't know the oldest, but 
you know, I have I have had people that have joined the industry, went through my Freight Burger Bootcamp and launched their business that are in their 70s. I guess that would be my answer. But I don't, I typically don't know how old my students are, right? It's not something that most people share. But kudos to you. You know, you're reinventing yourself at 60. Hey, listen, I've reinvented myself from the time I was 21 out of college. I can't tell you how many times I've probably had in my career, nine or 10 different businesses and in, in probably nine or 10 different industries. Okay. So I'm the king of reinventing myself. So kudos to you. And I'm sure you'll do great. Okay. Nicole asks, can I do the online course in January because I'm free in that period? My goal is to start working like an agent for free. I hope you can recommend some smaller brokerages companies I will do for free. Okay. Nicola, my freight broker bootcamp startup program, you can start anytime. It's accessible 24 7, 365. If you enrolled right now in my freight broker bootcamp program, you will get instant access to the training. And it's a self paced program that you can go at your own pace. You don't have to travel. You don't have to wait for specific classes. You can start taking that program anytime you want. There is no pressure. Most of my students complete that course uh, between four and eight hours of time, depending upon their, you know, their comprehension level, their skill level, all that over a two to four week period of time. Now, you can enroll today, take lesson number one, and then wait a month and take lesson number two, and then wait a week and take lesson number three. I mean, you can go through all that at your own pace is what I'm trying to say to you. So that's the Freight Broker Bootcamp Program. Now, the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program is a different program. That's an advanced sales training and coaching program. That's going to open for enrollment tomorrow. Um, and then five weeks consecutively, we will have live coaching calls where I will coach you and teach you and work with you and mentor you on the entire Freight Broker sales process and help you implement it in your business. Okay. So that is a more of a classroom type training. Um, but the other one is on demand. I hope that makes sense. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Jerry asks, once a shipper you have worked with before, okay, let me read. Once a shipper you've worked with before starts to ignore your emails and calls, how long do you wait before you call back to find out what went wrong and you have done a good job for them? Okay. So you worked with a shipper. Maybe you've moved a couple of loads. So you, you got past the most important and difficult hurdle, Right which is the friction associated with a shipper bringing on a new vendor because there's a lot of fear and apprehension there because of what might happen, right? So you've gotten past that initial fear and they've agreed to move some freight with you. So you have moved a few loads and then they start ignoring your calls and emails. All right, so typically one of two things happened. One, you didn't do a great job and they weren't satisfied you will probably be able to identify that from the transaction itself. Did it pick up late? Did it deliver late? Was there damage? Was there poor communications? What is the case? What happened on those loads? If something happened, excuse me, if you had some level of bad service, right? Or whatever the case may be, then that's probably what happened. The second one is traffic managers, logistics managers, freight managers are busy people. They juggle a lot of balls. It's not like they're just sitting there all day trying to reach out to you to move another load. So the load or lane that you may have worked on may not may only come up once a month or once a quarter, depending upon the volume and the type of lane that you've, you know, you started working on. So they may not need you right now. And they have other vendors that are working on that. So it's typically one of two things. Either you had a bad service, you had a service issue, or it's just out of sight, out of mind, right? They're busy with other things and you shouldn't take it personal. So now the question is, how long should you wait to follow up? Well, if, if you followed up, if you moved a load and you delivered that load out and you followed up with them, let them know that load delivered with no issue, um, and that happened today, the time to start following up is tomorrow. And the time to start following up is the next day. You need to follow up until you get them on the phone. Now, I did not say that you should send them an email every single day. 
I did not say that you should leave them a voicemail every single day. You need to figure out a unique way to re-engage that prospect. Let me give you an easy one. I'm going to give you a layup, okay? It'll cost you 20 bucks, but you made more than that on the first load and you know the lifetime value of that shipper. Um, and so here's an easy way to re-engage your prospect or your, your customer, if he's ignoring your emails and calls after multiple attempts, send him some Tim Hortons or Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, send him some coffee and donuts or pastries. That's one example. Have them delivered to his office with a note. Give the delivery guy an extra five bucks with a note that says, we appreciate doing business with you some sort of simple basic message, okay? That is going to draw the human response typically of reciprocation. They're going to want to thank you, okay? So they're more likely to respond to your email. They're more likely to respond to your call or your voicemail or your LinkedIn message or whatever the case may be. So you could send them some, you know, something simple. You could buy them lunch. You could send a pizza. I mean, like I'm saying, this is going to cost you 20 bucks, but you invest 20 bucks to get their attention, to re-engage the prospect, to identify why they're not responding to you. If they're just busy, then they're going to say, oh, Dennis, I'm sorry, man. I've just been really busy. I haven't gotten back to you. Hey, I really appreciate the pizza. That was awesome. That's my favorite pizza joint. Or he may say, hey, Dennis, really appreciate it, man. Listen, I got to be honest with you. Um, I was a little underwhelmed with that last load. You know, my boss chewed my ass out because it delivered a little bit late. And, you know, I'm not sure where that leaves us. And then that at least gives you an opportunity to try to re-engage, okay? So a small gift, a small token of your appreciation. Um, try to be creative. Ask somebody in the company to find out what their favorite place to go to lunch is. Ask them their in the try to gather some sales intelligence from other people in the organization of uh, what might be a creative way or an interesting way to re-engage them. But yeah, be different, right? Think outside the box. I hope that helps. That's just a really simple one, Jerry. Hey, George, as a seasoned broker, been working for 10 years, I hit a roadblock. I'm not able to get new customers who are my exclusive customer. Okay. So your question is, you want to get custom. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what your question is. Give me, give me more detail. I don't want to make an assumption on your question. Hit me up below. Be more detailed about what you are looking for from me. Okay. Be specific. Okay, George. And I'll try to bring it back up. Harvey asks, how much and which is better to pay brand new freight agents under my brand new brokerage? 50, 50, 60, 40, or a percentage of full line haul rate, 8 to 10%. I prefer percentage of profit. So I typically would, my personal preference, 50 to 70% based on volume, based on profit margin, based on some sort of milestones. New brokers would start out, if they don't have a lot of experience in a small book, then they'd start out at 50%. If they've got a book that's doing over 10,000 a month in profit, they may graduate to 60%. And if they've got a book that's doing maybe 25 or 30,000 a month in profit, they may graduate to 65 or 70%, um, assuming that their margins are decent and at least 10 to 15% profit margins. Okay. So that should give you a little bit of a roadmap. I prefer a percentage of profit, not a percentage of line haul. It's it very confusing with line haul and, and accessorials and, um, you know, and, 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 and fuel surcharge and all that sort of stuff. And for, you want to make it very easy for an agent to identify how much they're making on a load. And if in your TMS, it says you paid X, or the shipper paid you X, the carrier paid you Y, and here's the profit on the load, they know exactly what they made. And that's very important to be transparent and don't make it difficult for agents to understand what they're making, okay? A nurse asks, in your opinion, is being an agent profitable in the current economy? 
Yeah. There are agents that are making 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month that have went through my program. Yeah. There are also people that have went through my program that are making zero. So the answer is yes, but not everybody's going to be successful. I mean, I, 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 I would be an absolute liar if I promised you that. Okay. And I think you know that. So yeah, I think that being an agent can be very profitable in this, uh, in this economy if you have a winning system and you are educated and you're able to differentiate yourself. One of the biggest variables as to whether you will be successful as an agent in this economy is your ability to sell. Your ability to navigate uh, and sell through, you know, through the organization, through your target market effectively. They're, what they're not looking for is a generic pitch. They're not looking for, hey, my name's Dennis. I'm with XYZ Logistics. Hey, we've got trucks in your area from time to time. And I really like to work on you, help you with your freight. Um, can you send me a bid package? They're not interested in that. Why? Because they've heard that shit a thousand times. Everybody tells them that. That's not what they're interested in. If you say that to them, there's a very high probability that you're going to get the Heisman. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to get inside. You're not going to be effective. You're not going to develop rapport. Matter of fact, you're going to have a negative report. Okay. But if you figure out a way to be different, how to get their attention, all of a sudden that's interesting because they're sick of hearing the same old crap. Okay. Different is better than better. I've said that a million times. Hope that helps. Question from Tanya, being a freight broker, you're making cold calls to carriers if you don't have any currently, as well as shippers. My question is, do you call both at the same time or different days? In my personal opinion, freight brokers need to get the freight before they focus on carriers. And here's why. Now, there's some, let, me, let me explain to you why. Because if you have a niche, say you're, say you're in the, like I started, van, van niche, van equipment, Northeast outbound. So it has to pick up a New York PA up through New England. Okay. And then it's got to go West or South. That was my initial niche. I'm sharing it with you. I've shared it many, shared it with you guys a lot of times. That's how I started. If I started randomly just calling carriers all over the country, then there's a very good chance that I would say a high percentage of them, nine out of 10 of them don't come to the Northeast. And many of them are going to be flatbed or heavy haul or refrigerated. They're not going to have vans. So setting up carriers that don't specifically meet my niche doesn't make any sense to me. It's a waste of time. You're better off spending that time prospecting on prospecting shippers. And then simultaneously now what you can do is you can start setting up carriers that you've identified through load boards or lane histories or other resources that will fulfill your niche. So if you know that you have carriers that are in the Boston area looking to go to Chicago every day, that's a carrier that you're probably going to want to set up a relationship with. And here's why. Because you know that if you're calling in the Boston area, right, and you're calling in the Massachusetts area, there's a very good chance that at some point down the road, not too far, they're going to ask you to quote some freight that's going to go to Illinois or Chicago or somewhere along the way, Columbus or Cincinnati or Detroit, right? That's a route along the way to Chicago. So yeah, you may do that if it's, you may focus on those carriers if it makes sense associated with your niche. If it doesn't, then don't waste your time, spend your time on the shipper side. Now, in most cases, you're going to identify the shipper side, right? You're going to build a relationship with them. We're going to ask you for a freight quote, Boston to Chicago. And then at that point, if you don't have a resource for that, you're going to go to the load boards you're going to search for lane history. You're going to post a load. You're going to do search for trucks and you're going to identify what is the demand, how many loads to trucks, what's the rate. And then at that point, you're going to rate it for the shipper. You're going to have some confidence that you know some carriers that are moving those lanes. And then at that point, you're going to quote it. If you get the freight, you post the load. And then based on when that pickup date is, say it picks up tomorrow, you're going to get calls 
or you're going to make calls to carriers. And at that point, you're going to make a marriage. If you move the load, if the shipper is going to pay you 1200 bucks and you're going to pay the carrier a thousand, you're going to make 200 bucks. That's the basic framework of how it would work for you. I hope that helps. Okay, so Harvey Roberts asks, what is the best TMS plus CRM software for a brand new startup for the money? Okay, so here you go. Um, I've been asked this a million times. So I'm going to share with you. If you go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash TMS, okay? Freightbrokerbootcamp forward slash TMS. That is Tim Hyam, the CEO and friend of mine from Ascend TMS. They have they have over 50,000 customers using their TMS. They're very innovative. They're very technologically driven. They've been around for a very long time and they're very inexpensive relative to a lot of TMSs out there. It's a great place for you to start. Plus, if you go to that link, um, they're gonna give you another bonus but when you sign up, you can sign up without a credit card. You can get a trial without a credit card. And they'll give you a bonus. All you have to do when you sign up in the coupon code is put in FBBC. Okay? So you got to type coupon code because this identifies that you're with Freightburger Bootcamp. He gives my bootcamp people a special deal. Okay? So coupon code is FBBC. That's for the TMS, okay? You can sign up for free. You don't even have to put your credit card in. I can't, we can't make it any easier for you, okay? And you can kick the tires and do whatever you want, okay? Now, if you're looking for a CRM, there are lots of CRMs out there, but I'm gonna direct you to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash CRM. Now that, go, that will go to a company called Sales Dash. A friend of mine, Josh Lyles, is the owner and founder and creator of that program. Um, you can go in there. You can sign up for a free trial. At, I have used this software. Now, I've used a lot of different software. I've used um, Salesforce. I've used Zoho. I've used Pipedrive. They're all good, okay? But I like Sales Dash because it's simple. It's very affordable. And it's custom designed specific for the freight industry, okay? So if you go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash CRM, that'll bring you to their website. You can sign up for free. Let them know you came through Freight Broker Bootcamp. Josh and his team will take care of you, I promise, okay? So those are the two. There are lots of them out there. You can go search Google for wherever you want. You ask me for a couple of recommendations, there they are. I hope that helps. Okay, scrolling. Give me a minute here to find some good questions. Hold on. Parker, thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Okay, Jamie Lee says, I have Zoom info. Congrats, it's expensive. When I'm cold calling, should I call the HQ or any logistics employee? Okay, that's a good question. You know, I would focus on calling the person inside the organization that is the most qualified, not anybody who's in logistics. Traffic manager, traffic manager, warehouse manager, shipping manager, logistics manager. So if they are identified in Zoom info, if they have that information, then I would call them direct. If they don't have that information inside of Zoom info, but I know who the person is and I know their name, then I would probably call, I may call one of those numbers and ask for them, or I may call the headquarters and just try to get through the shipping with that person's name to ensure they don't get gatekeeped, right? So yeah, I think that's how I would do it. Um, 
do your, do your gather sales intelligence, go on LinkedIn, search Google, search their website. If you're not finding the information you want, Zoom Info. Zoom Info is very, very good. There's a lot of great information. It's not cheap. It's expensive, but it's very good data. So you are ahead of the game if you have access to that. Is that something you've purchased or are you, do you work for a company that gives you access to that? I'd like to, I'd be curious to hear that, Jamie. Okay, here's a question from John. My brokerage both assigns me customers and allows me to pursue and source. What are typical commission structures? What percentage should I expect for my existing customers versus if I lock in new customers? All right, so what John's referring to is he works as, it sounds like he works as an employee or maybe as an agent for a larger brokerage that has established customers that that maybe the broker or account manager that worked with them is no longer there and or they maybe they've been dormant for a period of time and they're assigning them to him because they want him to re-engage those customers and start driving some revenue. And what he's identifying is that a lot of times brokerages will pay different commission if they're giving you an established customer versus if you bring that customer to the table. So let's say if you bring a customer to the table as an agent, because I, I don't know what exactly your role is, um, John, but if you're the agent and you're bringing the customer to the table, that typically is going to be 50 to 70% of the profit. But if you are being assigned customers by the brokerage and they're actually established customers, customers that have done business with them before, then it would probably be a lesser commission. I might think it would be half, Right. Because what you're paid for um, is really heavily oriented towards bringing new business to the table. So if they're assigning it to, you know, just a, I can't give you a hard and fast number because if I ask a hundred different brokerages, I get 50 different answers, right? But I would say it would be probably half or less that you would get in commission on an existing customer. So I hope that helps. That's an existing customer of the brokerage, not yours. If you brought them to the table, then you should get 50 to 70%. Okay, question from Courtney. Dennis, I've stopped cold calling and started diving directly into shippers, directly to the shippers, driving directly to the shippers for loads. Using this method, I've been able to talk directly to shipping managers, owners, and get a tour of their facilities. However, I'm not getting any loads and the responses are things are slow, nothing this time. How can I overcome the responses? Okay, well, here's the thing. You're not getting objections. You're getting conditions, right? They're telling you that they don't have any freight. So maybe that's because you're, you're talking to too small a shippers. If you're identifying shippers that are very small, then they're going to have a less volume of freight and less frequency. So that, that equals less opportunity. So you may want to swim upstream a little bit. I don't know. I'm just giving you some feedback without being able to really coach you through this process. You know, if you were part, part of my Freightbreaker Sales Accelerator, we would break this down in detail and we would do it one-on-one -on -one in a Zoom call in, the, in my group coaching program, the Freightbreaker Sales Accelerator. But the fact that we're not there, it's very hard for me to dissect that. That's one of the powers of actually coaching, right? Because I can ask you, before I would ask, answer this question, I'd probably ask you five questions. And then I would give you the response. But because I can't do that, I got to be a little bit more generic. So you may be prospecting two smaller companies. Um, you don't get distracted by, you know, don't misunderstand conditions versus objections. The other thing I would tell you is that usually um, trust. Here's the biggest thing you got to understand. The biggest friction that you have between um, meeting a prospect and moving your first load is trust. That's the most challenging part. It's not price. Most people think it's price. It's not price. Price is a part of the equation, but it's really trust because you could give them the best price. And if they don't trust you, they're still not going to give you the load, right? So here's the thing that you might want to do. Have the questions I would ask, have you quoted them any lanes? Have you identified any lanes where they have needs? Have you identified frequently shipped lanes? Have you identified any of their challenging lanes? Have you provided them any freight quotes, right? If you haven't done any of that, well, you got to touch that base before you can expect to start moving freight. Um, and that could be a good follow-up 
right? Um, that you want to do some research on their lanes and be prepared and have carriers ready to go when they do have freight. So, yeah, I mean, those are a few things, a few tidbits, but I can tell you it's usually trust. So one thing I might use is I might use customer testimonials as a way to continue to build that trust and to keep building that trust until they're ready to ship, right? So what I might do is once a week over the next four weeks, you know, highlight a customer testimonial to them by email or maybe in a drop-in or if we go to lunch, right? So squeaky wheel gets the grease, but you also have to focus on trust. And I think that after you've established some basic rapport, the thing that is missing is that um, it's that friction associated with bringing on a new vendor and moving that first load. Because remember, one of two things is going to happen when they give you that first load, you're either going to pick up, deliver on time in good condition with no problems, or you're not. And they're worried about the or not. If you don't, then it's going to be like egg on their face, right? It'll be an embarrassment to them, their, their employees, their boss, everybody may know, and that could have an impact on their job, right? So I hope that helps. Uh, Ludmilla, once you have a potential customer asking for your packet, how long should you wait before you follow up? Well, before you give them the packet, you should identify and ask them, what is the next step and timeline after I provide you this packet? So you should ask that question up front versus just giving it to them and then, and then trying to predict what they think. Okay. So if you were on the phone with me and you say, Oh, well, Dennis, send me over a set of packet or send me over your information and we'll start there. My question to you would be awesome. Ludmila, I really appreciate it. I look forward to working with you. Let me ask you one more question. I'll send this over to you. What's the timeline and when should we get back on the phone to move this to the next step in order to set this up so that we could start moving your freight? Zip. Listen, they're going to tell you. They're going to say a couple things. They're going to say, well, why don't you give me a call back on Friday, which would be great. Or they're going to say, ah, you know, I'm really busy right now. I'll give you a call next week, which isn't so great because they're giving you the I'll call you objection. Uh, or they're going to say, you know, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when we're ready, right? Something along those lines. And at least now you know. Because before you get off the phone, you want to address that. If they say, you know, I'll call you next week. Say, listen, that's great. I'm excited. What would be a good day? I know you're very busy. Try to nail down a day, a time, an appointment, a set schedule. That's part of your job to move the sale forward, right? If they say, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. Say, you know, you, you, you know, depends on how you want to react. I might say something like, Ludmilla, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd be a very rich man <laughs> and hopefully they laugh. And if they do or don't, you just simply say to them, listen, I don't want to waste your time. I know you are extremely valuable or extremely busy. Here's the thing. And then I would dive into and try to build enough rapport, enough trust to move the sale to the next step. Okay. I can't give you a, a guaranteed script or outline. I'm just giving you an example and a framework of how you should be handling pre-vetting your follow-up after that situation happens. So I hope that helps. Hi, Dennis. If I get a request for a quote, should I send a price as fast as possible? As fast as you are able to accurately ascertain the price. Yes. If it takes you four minutes to ascertain the price, in four minutes and 30 seconds, you should be sending that email or calling them back. So yes, the quicker you respond, the more likely you are to get the business. That's just a math equation when it comes to anything related to sales. So for example, there were, there's been many studies done where if somebody requests information about a product or service, in many cases, statistically speaking, it's the first salesperson that actually responds that will get the order a heavy majority of the time. Okay. So yeah, so I would say respond as quickly as you can 
Um, but the key is with accurate data. Okay. So I hope that helps. Okay. So let's do this. What time is it? Oh, Jesus. It's 105. All right. Who wants a quick peek at the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator online program? Who wants a quick peek of it? I will share my screen. If you guys are interested, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Say, yes, I want to peek. Yes, I want to peek. Yes, I want to peek. Yes, I want to see it. Yes, I'd love to check it out. Whatever. Hit me up in the comments and let me know. And I'll give you maybe if there's enough people interested, I'll give you a sneak peek. It's already 105 my 106 my time. I'm running late. I said I wasn't going to do this, but uh, if I was this late, but if we get enough people that are interested, I'll spend a few minutes showing you the inside of the program. And then don't forget, guys, you got to get on the wait list. If you're not on the wait list, you are a fool my friend, because you're not going to get the information. You're not even going to know what it's all about. You're definitely not going to know the value, the price, how it works, everything. Okay. So let's see, what do we got? All right. So we got, yeah, we got a bunch of people. Okay, cool. All right. So here we go, guys. Let me share my screen real quick. Hold on a minute. I'm going to jump in here. Let's see if I can figure this out. Present screen. Boom. Boom. Okay, cool. All right. Tell me if you guys are seeing the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. Tell me if you guys are seeing that. Let me know if you guys are seeing that. That would be great if I could understand that. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know that you guys are seeing that. Let me see. Boom, boom, boom. Are you guys seeing that? Okay, cool. All right, good. All right. So actually, no, let's see. Add to stage. Boom. All right. So now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing it. Okay. You're not seeing it yet. Okay. So now you guys are seeing it. All right. So I'm going to scroll over and kind of give you, all right. Are you seeing it now? Let me know if you guys are seeing it now before I go forward and just kind of breeze through it really quick. Okay, cool. All right. So here we go. Freightburger Sales Accelerator. This is the Freightburger Sales Accelerator um, has two components. One is an online course, which is the entire system that you can access on demand 24 seven. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna show you here. So the Freightburger Sales Accelerator, you can see here, uh, there's an intro and then module one is all about mindset, okay? We talk about what is sales mindset, limiting beliefs associated with sales mindset, with, with sales in general. And so that's a very important one, that's module one. So we start with mindset because like I said earlier, you guys gotta overcome any sort of fear or apprehension associated with sales. That's where we start. Number two is module two, finding your, filling your sales funnel. This is where we're talking about understanding the sales process, winning cold outreach formulas, building your authority as an expert. You know, there's a lot. This is really one of the meat and potatoes of the program. There's a lot in here. There's a lot to this. Okay. So you've got to understand, we talk about how to get your prospects attention. We talk about a multi touch point outreach strategy. We talk about all these things in filling your sales funnel. This is filling your sales funnel. You know, again, you've got that big funnel, you got to put people to the top and then at the bottom, you have a smaller number of customers that fall out. Okay. And then module number three is all about follow-up objection handling and closing the sale. Right? So we all know follow-up, the fortunes in the follow-up. You've heard it a million times, right? The fortune is the follow-up handling by our objections, closing the sale doesn't need to be scary and the power of social proof. Right? So those are a few things that we go over in module three. And you can see here, I'll give you an example of what this looks like. So you can see here, it's all video driven. There's downloads associated with all of the different trainings. You know, you can come in here and you can see how Module, it all works. That means, means they do their, the most presentation that I've done. I wanted to make sure you got my email. The follow-up, right? So you can see that. Um, and then we go down into, you know, module four, which is winning referrals and customer retention strategies. And then we go into module five, which is modern sales technology. Some of the tools that I use, how to use them, why I use them. And then this was some of the bonuses. You know, we have a members only Facebook group. We have um, cold call scripts built in here. We've got weekly Q&A coaching calls. This is where you'd sign up for that. Last time I included the no cold calling for freight brokers course and program that I've, that's been so popular in the past as a bonus. I also included downloadable shipper directory. Um, so there's a lot of things that's been included in this. 
there's some other stuff here too, but, but yeah, ultimately this is what the freight broker sales accelerator looks like from the outside in. Let me see real quick. Um, boom. Yeah. So you can see here, this is everything that you get in the freight broker sales accelerator. You get lifetime access to all that, but that only happens if you are on the wait list. Okay. So you got to be on the wait list. Okay. So, um, I can't, you know, I can't make it any easier than that. Get on the wait list. If you guys want to see, um, and get notified in the next 24 hours, when I release this program, it's as simple as that. Again, this program, you know, I've put over, I don't know the exact number. It's getting close to a thousand. It's somewhere between six and 700 students to this program. And at the end of this program, we do a, um, a survey, an exit survey after they've completed the program. And we asked them to rate the program from one to 10, one meaning it was worst experience they ever had, 10 meaning it was the best experience and everything they paid for and what they were looking for. And what happened was I would have been happy with a seven, ecstatic with an eight, but the average rating so far is a 9.2 out of 10, which tells me I hit it out of the park. Now I'm always striving to make it better and we're always making small changes to it, but if you want to be a part of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, where I coach you personally and work with you and teach you exactly what you need to do, you got to get on the wait list. It's as simple as that. All right. So um, is there anybody on here that was a part of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator? Um, hit me up in the comments and then we're going to wrap it up here in a minute. But you guys can always catch us on replay. If you start, if you joined late, you can always catch us on replay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure we got people that are part of the that were part of it. And I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, consider those four reasons why uh, freight brokers need a sales coach that I went over early on. Congratulations to Jamie Lee, who is the winner of the t-shirt. Thank you, everybody, for your great questions. If I did not get to your questions, maybe I'll try to come back in later in the week and answer them in the comments. If not, come back next week for another freight broker boot. Bootcamp Live. I usually do Q&A at the end and you can come back and ask your questions then. Truly appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week and be ready tomorrow morning, Tuesday, October 3rd for the release of the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator and I'll see you on the inside.